I'm just so excited that you have chosen to be with us on this, our open day. Um, and today we're talking about how purpose drives our investment choices. What are the choices that, that we have made and how do we link them to our purpose? We've got an amazing group of speakers who are going to be sharing us, with us through this day. And for those who are interacting with Centonomy for the first time, let me, let, let's just tell you a little bit about our company. Centonomy is um, a financial education company. We train in the area of personal financial management and investment. And really our mission is to help people to create wealth. So in fact, our mission statement as it is, is that we are on a mission to shift mindsets so that purposeful people like yourselves can create wealth and live abundantly. This is what we are, we are aiming for. And so when we talk about wealth, in fact, that's a good place to begin because I always love to hear feedback from, uh, from our wonderful people. If you're on Facebook or if you're on Zoom, just type in, when I said the word wealth, what came to mind? If you can just quickly type in what came to mind when I said the word wealth, because this is going to define a lot of the discussions that we have uh, today. So if you can type in when I say wealth, what does that mean? Because I know we're investing in order to create wealth, but we, we don't know what it is. It's kind of hard. So if you can type in the chat box there in Zoom, uh, what do you think wealth is? Even on Facebook, as you're following us with us there, what is wealth? Ah, this is amazing. Charlene says financial freedom, just Justine says abundance, um, investment and financial stability. Man, ah, Gabriel is, is he didn't even uh, beat about the bush. He just said money, financial freedom, living abund uh, in abundance, money, sustainable financial future. I love that. Living in a way I want. Ah, Grace has been somewhere. Grace has been to a Centonomy event before because she has the definition that we have personal net worth, peace of mind, financial freedom. I'm very surprised. I, I know majority of, of people in this room are, are Kenyans. And I'm beginning to wonder, Kenyans, are you really here? Because usually you hear of land, owning land somewhere along the way. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we hear that along the way many, many times. Riches, sustainable financial freedom. Excellent, excellent, excellent. But these are all various different definitions of wealth. And so it's so important when we begin to have um, a one a definition that we're drawing from, I am not discounting your definition of wealth. I hope you understand this. I'm not taking it away. In fact, please continue, please continue to um, uh, have as, uh, to follow as along with us as much as you can and continue, continue to hold on to that view of wealth as family, friendship, uh, to, people talk about wealth, uh, if, you, if, if you're an African man like myself, many times people tell, tell me, ask me, you, you just have daughters. That means you're really wealthy. I don't know what that means specifically, but um, yes, all these various definitions, wealth is health, wealth is joy, that's good. But for the sake of our discussion today and how we discuss wealth in Centonomy, we need to have a similar definition so that we can draw from there so that we are drawing these investments and this purposeful life from that position. So I'm encouraging you to follow through on this. And I, I want to just give uh, Grace Kala, uh, who's on the Zoom platform, a big uh, thumbs up for that because she's, she's kind of gotten it. I always ask in sessions like this, when you come to learn, please have a pen and somewhere to write next to you because these principles I'm telling you will change your life along the way. And if you don't write them down, it's so easy to forget. So let's write this down so that we begin our journey of, of um, understanding wealth creation together. So at Centonomy, we define wealth this way. Wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want. Let's write it down. I don't even want to put it on the screen because that, will, that makes us lazy sometimes. We just, we just look at it and say we've seen it. No, I want you to write it down. Wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want. Wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want without having to work. Now, 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 don't worry, I will explain. So don't, uh, don't uh, start tweeting us yet or, or typing yet, we'll explain, we'll break it down. So one more time, write it down. Wealth 
is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want without having to work. And I'm trying to pick all the points that you have then in, in the chat box. Thank you so much for the, the comments on Facebook. We really appreciate that. But I want to try and bring us to the same place. So write it, make sure you've got it right on your, don't misquote me when you go somewhere else. Wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want without having to work. Let's break it down. One of the issues that we have is when we say wealth, and now obviously we're talking at, about it from a financial perspective, we are not specific. So when we say the lifestyle that you want, it begins to define it. So here's, here's a good example. Here's a good example. Let, let, me, let me ask you and, and type in the chat box so you can also be able to follow with us on Facebook. I'm, I'm trying to listen to you. I want to get as much feedback from you as possible. I want you to please let me know. What is it, if you don't mind, what kind of house, home, would you like to live in? If you don't mind, just down there in the comments in Facebook, what kind of home would you like to live in? Just begin to describe it. I want you to describe where that house is, what, uh, I don't even want to put words in my mouth. Describe your dream home, where it is and what it looks like, what the experience is. I want someone, if you can, as quickly as possible, just do that. I want you to define and to describe your dream home. If you can take a moment to do that, it would really be important to us. So the question is, and you can type that directly in the chat box and also, um, in, the, in the comments on Facebook. Describe your dream home. Let's see if you can do that. Just describe your dream home. Ah, I'm getting some comments here as well. Ah, excellent. So people are saying, okay, Sarah, great, wonderful. So I see, uh, Justine, thank you so much. You're quick to respond. And you said, a mansion on a ranch. I, she says, I love, oh, yes, Justine, I, I love farming. So I want acres and acres of land around my house. Justine, you have, so you've told us it's an, on a ranch and, the, and now I want you to begin to this, a nice country home. So I, I, I can see a number of people who are beginning to feel that and to see it. You can imagine a nice country home, about five bedrooms on a ranch. Justine, you're not the only one. <laughs> Some people are saying, uh, Diani on the beach, a, a, a second row from the beach, Bangal so you don't want to be on the beach because on the beach you might be, you might see other people, but second row from the beach, bungalow, four bedrooms with a guest wing. Aye, that's now my brother says a house in the countryside with an expansive land, wonderful land keeping fully furnished with amenities. Now we're talking. Watch what has happened in the last couple of minutes. We went from saying, I want to be rich or I want to be wealthy. And we began to become specific. You see, because let me take Quena as an example. Thank you so much, Quena, for participating in this. So Quena has said, where that house is. In case you don't know and you're, you're, you're outside of Kenya, Diani is a wonderful beach resort town and the coast of Kenya, um, the beaches there, the people there, the atmosphere, it's a coastal town. Diani is a bit slower, it's a bit smaller, it's a bit more intimate. Uh, and so I can, I can just see what Quena is talking about, that beach lifestyle. And he has defined it and, and, and brought it to that level where they're, they're now on second row from the beach. So you, maybe that, that uh, distancing from, you don't want to be with everybody else on the beach, but you want that access. You want to be able to see the ocean out from the place. Now we're being specific. Watch what happens when we become specific with our planning. Instead of saying, I want to be wealthy, I want the second row Diani beach lifestyle in a bungalow, which is four bedrooms and a guest wing. What changes now is we can put a number to that dream. And we can say, we can begin to say, what 
how much it will cost Quena to achieve that goal. Let's stop being general and be specific with our goals. Because once we do that, once we're able to break down our goals in that way and say, hey, I want that kind of lifestyle, then you can put a number to it. I don't know, I can, what they have described, that house maybe in Kenya shillings is about maybe any, anywhere between 200 million and 300 million shillings. That's about $2 million, two, to two, two million to three million US dollars. Now we have a goal. And Quena can begin to work backwards and say, I want to end up in a two to three million dollar home on the beach in Diani in this period of time, maybe within the next 10 years or within the next 20 years. And Quena can work backwards and begin to say, what must I do today in order to achieve that goal in future? Are you beginning to see that when we talk about purpose and we talk about investments and we talk about investments, then it becomes extremely important, extremely important for us to define it. If we can define it, then it makes a huge difference to everybody in the room. So I want you no longer to begin to describe your dreams and your ambitions and your financial plans in generalities. I, I love it when people come to our class and they say, I want to be rich. Our immediate question after that is how rich? Because rich is relative. And so when you define it as the $2 million, $3 million house lifestyle in Diani, now we have a goal. That's the first part of the definition. Remember, we are, we're going through the definition number one, which was define the lifestyle that you want. Now, the second half, and I know that's where people were, were having problems with it. And, and I just mentioned that it is without having to work. Now, this is what people were trying to describe by the terms financial freedom, net worth, these were the terms that we're using, but I want to simplify it to without having to work. What does that mean? That means that you have enough investments that your investments, your assets are putting enough money in your pocket, Quena, enough money in your pocket to live in that Diani house without having to work. And I'm saying without having to work, I'm not saying without working because most people who get to that point are so purposeful driven, like yourselves tuning in today. They're so purposeful driven that they work not because they have to, but because they want to. But the ability to sustain that lifestyle is the financial freedom that we're talking about without having to work. Whether you work or not, Quena can still live in that beach resort. That's what financial freedom is. And that's what we want to talk about here at Centonomy and to begin to help you to work towards today. So I'm inviting you, I'm inviting you, I'm inviting you to pay attention, to take notes today. But most of all, the transformation that you're looking for is not going to be found in this two hour session that we're having today. No, no, no. It's going to be found when you sign up and now log into the Centonomy 101 program, which is starting on the first week of June because that program takes you on a step-by-step -step basis and I'll be breaking it down later on today. And now it is available everywhere in the world. So long as you have an internet connection, now you can be able to join into the Centonomy 101 program, which has only been in the past available here in Nairobi. But now it doesn't matter where you are, across Kenya, across East Africa, across Africa, and all our friends around the world. This is your opportunity to begin to learn the principles that will get you to financial freedom. So today I'll be letting you know about that program and we'll be talking about it along the way. And I'm so happy and excited to invite you to participate in this session. So wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want without having to work that you have enough assets that uh, I want you to follow through on some of the comments that were coming through there. It was so exciting to hear the stories um, that were being defined. I want to 
five bedroom spacious apartment in an area around Nairobi. I think that's somebody who who feels me. I'm not a, I'm not um I'm not a country person. I, hey, those people who are talking about acres of land, uh, I can't relate with that. I love people. And in fact, that's what I told you, I'm, I'm missing being around other people. I love the hustle and bustle of cities. So I'm with you, one of those, you know, within the city, one of those places I can see a three bedroom house with a DSQ. I can see a four to three bedroom house next to a river. That's Dennis Otieno. He can, be, he can see a river right next to it. I can imagine that. Anastasia is describing two acres of land in a secure, quiet area. You know, she's. I'm just seeing all the wonderful, wonderful places that people are describing. A country home away from a city, five bedroom mansion, somewhere in Nanyuki, which is another uh, country in Kenya. This is amazing. I want us to keep these ideas in mind so that we begin not just to dream about them, but to put together a strategy to achieve them. And we have seen that strategy being achieved by many along the way. So you're gonna hear from a couple of people today. I'm so excited uh, that we've got a, a great panel of speakers for us today. I'm so excited that our founder and uh, um, the chairman of the board here at Centronomy is also available, Ashek and Dwati, and you saw her earlier on. But I want to invite uh, our first speaker of the day, um, if you don't mind, uh, who is Gladys Wamaida. Gladys Wamaida is an accredited mediator, um, mediation tutor advocate at KMK Advocates. Gladys is a proud Centonomy uh, alumni. Hi Gladys, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Fine, thank you. Good to see you. I, I was just sharing with people, I remember the first time we met in the class, I don't know if you remember the discussion on money and if you remember everyone quantity, I still remember that audience. And I, I want to invite you to, um, to, to take some time and, and tell people about what your experience was like and how you have thought about purpose and money along the way and investments along the way. So Karibu Sana Gladys, here's your time to share. Thank you very much for this opportunity to just share a bit of my life and uh, maybe to reach out to others who maybe were in the position I was in before I did Centonomy and the whole process and that they would experience what I am experiencing now after Centonomy. Now, why did I do Centonomy? Uh, I don't know, I'll just, uh, just throw it out there for, for the, uh, the people to think about. Have you ever lived your life, worked very seriously and get to that point where you ask, what is all this for? I want growth. Why aren't I growing? I am putting in so much effort, but the returns are not translating into the effort that you're putting in. And I realized, I got to that point where I, I realized that there was a problem, that I need to find out what that problem was and sort it out. And the problem was financial. Unless you learn and realize that money has a culture, money has a tradition. And until you learn that culture and that tradition, you cannot move forward. And that's why I decided to do Centonomy, to find out what is that that I was missing that was not uh, enabling me to grow and enabling me to plan for my retirement. As you can see, I'm advanced in age. And now I have to be thinking about my retirement. I did Centonomy and uh, there were quite a number of lessons that I, I learned. And the most important uh, lesson that I learned was that I was the solution. I don't have to look out there for the solution. Everything is within me. And I was asked, look at what you have in your hand, because that is what you're going to use to enable you to grow and uh, live the life that you've always wanted to live. I was taught how to manage my income. 
to analyze and assess my dreams. Yes, I've had people have dreams. How are you going to achieve those dreams? You know, it's all within you. If you want to live in Diani, second row, why not? Why shouldn't you be entitled to live that kind of life, to live in that place? It's achievable. So I realized that everything is within me and that I have to, to uh, through Sentonomy, I was able to learn the culture of money, the traditions and the principles that money adheres to. If you apply those principles, if you uh, acknowledge that culture, everything will fall into place. So uh, I learned also to establish a relationship with my money. Track it as it comes in. I track it every day and, and I was taught how to establish an investment portfolio. What does Wamaida want? When I retire, what do I want? In my business, what do I want in the future? What do I want to see in the future? And start investing now. In Centonomy, I learned the time value of money. If I want that house in Diani, second row, when do I want it? Put it down. What kind of house do I want? How much is it going to cost me? And when do I want it? Work backwards. And I was taught that the, uh, if let's say the amount is uh, X, how am I going to achieve that X? So one, you have to specify your goals, describe it and be specific and make actions to achieve that goal. So that's, those are the lessons I, I learned. And what were the mistakes that I was doing that I needed to undo? Number one, what are my debts? How do I get into debt? Are those debts positive or are they negative? I was taught that they are positive debts. And the negative debts, I have to pay them off. And I was taught how to pay them off. One after the other, after the other. How do you pay off your debt? Not that the, you deal with the small one first and then go it to the big one. No. Which has the highest interest? Deal with that one first. Then the amount that you once you finish that one you have extra income go to the next debt and the next and the next then after that you have that income to invest it in some in your ultimate goal now what other mistake was did i undo the other mistake i undid was looking outside i started looking within what is in my hand do I have some land somewhere? What can I do with that land instead of it staying idle? Can I become a farmer? There are some people I've heard who want to be a farmer. What kind of farming will I do on that land that it will bring an investment to achieve my goal? Do you, can you uh, build some block of flats? Oh, do you have a house with many rooms? Like now my children have gone out to university. What can I do with the space that I have? Can I make it an A, A, a B and B? Can I lease it out? What space do I have? Can I utilize it in such a way that it will bring me an investment uh, income without me having to work? Can you build some shops? Like nowadays there's... Uh, the, you can build these stalls or that kind of thing. Can you do that? How much is it going to cost you? If you come into some inheritance, how do you multiply that money? We were taught about uh, investing that money 
in treasury bills, there's treasury bonds, there's shares, there's property, there's the market fund. How do you make what you have multiply? You don't need so, so much money. You can start even with 3,000 bob. 3,000 shillings every month, consistently, diligently, towards your ultimate goal. So why is it important to, to invest? Because of your future. What kind of life do you want to live? What I would encourage you is talk to your future self. See yourself maybe 20, 30 years. And what would your future self be telling you now? Because it is doable. Whatever you want, whatever you desire is doable. It is possible. You may not see the future now. It looks so far off but it's not. If you're consistent, if you're diligent, and if you're focused, you know exactly where you want to go, where you want to be, you will achieve. So um, a, a very good friend of mine who I really value and honor once told me that a coin is part of a million and you can't be a millionaire without taking care of the shilling. Regardless of the amount of money that you have in your pocket, value it, honor it, and see how you can use that coin to multiply, to multiply for you to achieve what you want to do. Establish a relationship with your money. Start having your investment portfolio, whatever you decide your vehicle to be. And so that now it can bring forth fruit and create new opportunities for growth, prosperity, and ultimately happiness in your life. Because that 3,000 will give birth to 1,000. Then you have 4,000. Reinvest it. Then you, you increase your money that way. That is growth. I don't know. Do I still have some more time? You have a little bit of time, Gladys. And I'm just I'm taking notes here rapidly as you're going. <laughs> Even okay. I'm telling you after many years of going through this, you still have to hear. Um, yes, just a couple of minutes and then we can complete. Okay. So... Um, I think uh, maybe I'll just uh, summarize what I was saying. I would encourage people, you might have debts, please deal with them one after the other. But after that, start investing, have a relationship with your money, track your, in, uh, your money daily. What do you spend? How do you spend it? Where do you spend it? Because once you start having that relationship, recording daily, you establish what you spend on. So even as you analyze every quarter, every six months, every half year, every annual, you will establish exactly how much you spend, exactly how much you save, and where is, you know, where is the money disappearing so that you can still all those loopholes where the money is is actually seeping away okay so that yes. is very very important so that now you will realize exactly how much you have available for you to invest i'll also encourage you to to begin investing no matter how small start investing make it a, a tradition a culture for you to actually know this is how much I have and this is where it's going to go. You are going, you take control of your finances. It's not everything just moves. You don't know what, where your money went. Take control, 
and ensure that everything that you are doing with your money is being recorded so that now you can also have a track record of everything that you're doing. And then take time. Now we have a lot of time in our hands. Take advantage of this corona period to have a, a treat with yourself. Yeah? What do you have in your hands? What do you have in your hands that you can use to bring growth in your life? Mm. And then always remember, you are the solution and protect your investment. Value your money. That one shilling, can you please value it and know that it will multiply if you put it to work? It will work. Money is just a vehicle. It is just waiting for you to give it direction. Can you give it that direction that you need, uh, uh, that it needs? And then realize that you, we are always told when you go for business classes, when you go for different trainings on entrepreneurship, everything, be specific. Be specific of what you want. If I want a two bedroom house, good, that's for me. Not for all of us. That's what will make me happy. Mm -hmm. So why should you achieve it? Why should you achieve it? So I would encourage you, start today. Do autonomy so that you can know what you need to know. That you can understand the culture of money and how it works. And how to, you're taught those principles so you can apply them, not to put them, uh, you know how we, you can do courses and uh, pack everything. Apply. Yeah. Apply yeah. the principles that you're going to learn in Centonomy so that you can live an abundant life. When you retire, now, 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 you're in Corona period. Some of you have been, go, uh, been, put, uh, gone, uh, been put on leave without pay or leave with a, a reduced salary or you've been declared redundant. So how are you going to support yourself? How are you going to support yourself if you don't have, you hadn't started investing to ensure that your money has been growing? So that now, during this period, you're not living under stress because there's somewhere where every month you're receiving something. Yeah. Every month, you're, you're catered. you already know your expenses, how much you spend on food, how much you spend on transport, how much you spend on power, water, everything. It is going to be catered for during this whole period because you started before. Don't start, uh, don't look at me and say, oh, she's elderly and everything. You, that professional who's watching me right now, you're yes. 20, 21, 20 something. Start now. Not Thank later. Thank you, Gladys. Start now. now. Now, today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So that now, at least some of you are under your parents. Some of you, uh, you've got a little money. That little yeah. money is the one that you're going to start. Start like now. You can tie your belt. You don't have obligations. You don't have responsibilities. Yes. Start now. Do autonomy 101 so that you can learn these principles early, early enough. So that now I want you, people, I want you, Gladys. <laughs> if I let her go, she will finish the whole time because the <laughs> wisdom she has to share is uh, is just amazing. Gladys, as always, I want to give you some feedback from what people are saying. Lila yeah. said he likes that you said you need to have a relationship with your money. I, I think that was one thing that she took away from it. And there's a few other people who are just talking and saying, um, this is so important. I need to deal with my debts. I need, uh, and they're beginning to speak their, um, I, love, I love this, somebody saying, speak into existence. I want to own, I want to do this. That's wonderful. Gladys, I think if I let you go on, I know, I know as lawyers, you, you are paid to talk. Uh, I know you can finish the time for us, but the wisdom has come through. Do you have one parting word, one sentence that you can tell people as we move along? When you do autonomy, apply the 
time value of money. Once you've learned that, apply that principle in your life, you're good to go. Your retirement is, is positive. And then, in fact, that person who wants to live in the and be honest, I hope you'll invite us. Yeah, and I I'm hope sure they will. Their house, it will be like <laughs> that that concept of the hotel where you pay, pay, uh, you get visitors who pay for the room. That yeah. home will be generating income for you. I'm talking. Hey, Gladys, thank you so, so, so much. God bless You're you. Uh, God you are really you. a part of the Centonomy family, and I, I love the wisdom and the thoughts that are coming through. I'm just hearing Gabriel saying every coin matters, time value of money. Um, and, and even their questions coming in, uh, Justin has asked, when is the next class starting? First week of June is when it is starting. Gladys, we really, really appreciate your time and that you're able to Thank come you. and share with us. I Thank want to you. share some of the principles that you'll be learning in the class because um, thank you so much, Gladys, uh, and, and st stay with us so that you might answer some questions along the way. So for those who are asking questions with the details about the class, don't worry, we'll be sharing those shortly. But I wanted to, to begin a, a short exercise so that you can, be, you can experience what we do in the class. Uh, Gladys shared a little bit about um, debt, for instance, and she said it's important to understand how to use debt positively or how debt can be used negatively. So we, we, in the class, the Centonomy 101 class, we, we are very practical. We use actual examples that are able to help you and we give you tools like the tool that I've just broadcast on the screen. If you can pay attention, this is called a loan amortization schedule. This is what banks and lending institutions use to measure your loans. So um, don't worry about the, the, the currency. We've used dollars there, but don't worry. It applies across the board. And this tool is used to break down what is called a reducing balanced loan, which are, more, which are the most uh, uh, prevalent in the market across the world. I want you to begin to think um, about what are the potential uses of debt. So we like to use cars because uh, sometimes people think about, you know, I, a car is one of my biggest assets and we, and we begin to challenge that. Let me give you an example, just using this, this uh, amortization schedule. If you can see on the screen there, um, in Kenya, if we were to buy a small uh, saloon car or in the US, you call it a sedan, a small saloon car like a Toyota, um, what, what would you call it? A Toyota, um, uh, this is an, a Premio, a Premio Toyota or an, a Camry of that kind that you hear. A Camry is probably a slightly more expensive than that. If we were to purchase that car, uh, import it secondhand from outside the country, if we were to do so and do so um, into this country, this is kind of what you would be doing. You'd be borrowing um, about 1.5 million shillings uh, and just so that you can do some calculations in your head for those outside of, Ke of Kenya, uh, 100 shillings is about one US dollar. Uh, so you'd be talking about $15,000 or so, okay? So 1.5 million shillings. And in Kenya, we'll be borrowing, sorry, I've not even changed it to the current rates, about 14%, not 13%. So you can imagine the interest rates in Kenya are pretty high. And you borrowed that loan for about five years. Then your repayments would be, as you can see here on this other side, about 34 a thousand shillings, about $340 every, every month for 60 months. And you'd pay a total interest, interest alone of 594,142. Let's see if people are still awake in this session. And those who are in, on Zoom, type in the chat box. Those who are on Facebook, you can do so in the comments. I want you to say, how much, if I bought this car, how much would I ultimately pay? If you can do a quick calculation, I've shown you the amount and I've shown you the interest only that you're borrowing. So how much would I ultimately pay? Ah, some people are quick. I've, I've, seen, I've seen a quick response coming through. That's Justine who has, was written over 2 million shillings. Yes, that's right. In fact, if you do the calculation, thank you. I'm seeing a couple of responses coming through uh, on Facebook. So Victor has, has, has done the actual calculation. Victor has said it's two. 2.094 million. Thank you very much, Kennedy. So when you bought the car, it was valued at 1.5. But over a five-year period of time, you have paid 2.09 million because you borrowed for this car. Okay? So that's the principle just to have in mind. Now, 
we're not saying do not borrow. What we're saying is understand what you're doing when you borrow, okay? So now that you've understood, you're paying 2.09 million shillings for a car that is worth 1.5 million shillings when you bought it. But here's the question, and let's see if people are quick enough to get this response. After five years, because you've paid this loan over a five-year period of time, after five years, how much is this car now worth? If someone can help me out quickly. How much on average do you think that car would be worth? Because you've been using it, you've been driving it. After five years now, you own it, you don't co-own it with the bank. How much do you think that car would be worth? I'm, I'm looking for those answers in the... <laughs> Velma, that is excellent. I'm just seeing and I'm seeing some of those. So a majority of those who are responding right now are saying it would be worth less. So you've paid more than what it was worth. And after now you own it yourself, it is now worth less than what it was even worth at the beginning. That's why we talk about your personal car that you use for your own transport as not necessarily being an asset in the traditional sense because it's taking money out of your pocket rather than putting money in the pocket. Now, we want to have a discussion and be begin to see very quickly what um, an investment mindset could be. Uh, in, this, in this country, we, 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 we're also using uh, an app that I'm sure everyone knows around the world, an app called Uber. And it is possible in this country, for instance, to own a car and lease it essentially to Uber and you get some, uh, some returns from it. In this country, we have a service called Uber Chap Chap, which is uh, Chap Chap means quickly, quickly uh, in our slang here. And so Uber Chap Chap are small cars. They're, they're really tiny cars. 1800 cc 1000 cc cars that you can you can use to just zip around cars they're essentially city cars to get one of those city cars one of them in kenya you'll spend about 450,000 to 500,000 let's say half a million shillings okay half a million shillings which is about $5,000 rather than the $15,000 you'd have spent buying this this saloon car so here we go what we're beginning to think about is if you can afford this repayment of, of the 1.5 million shillings or $15,000, why not? Because most people who are buying that small sedan, you're driving by yourself and they're driving most likely within the city at city speeds. What if you, instead you bought three of those Uber chap chaps, those small city cars that you can make into taxis? Take one for yourself, and put the other two on the road. Now, those two, I know at this time with the lockdown, I know the taxi business is not working very well. I'm just trying to begin to think differently about the way we look at our money. Obviously, we're not buying cars right now, but we will be buying cars again. But watch this. So now you have two of them on the road and they're earning some money for you. On average, it's about $20 or 2,000 shillings um, a, a month, I mean, a, a, a day, and in a week, you can be able to make a lot more than that. On average, if you had two, on, two cars on the road, they would give you a higher return, higher pay than the loan repayment that you're making there. So you could have your own car and actually be putting money in your pocket. And that's the kind of thinking that we're talking about here. So we're not saying don't own a car. We're saying, can we do the mathematics around the car? And we talk about this in detail, how we can address this issue of the loan side. How do you use it positively? You see that there was the negative side, the positive side as well. And if you find yourself in debt, and I'm sure many of us are dealing with debt, how can we pay this debt down as quickly as possible? So I wanted to share that because I know some people were asking, I hope you began to see the difference in the way that, 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 that we are thinking here at Centonomy and trying to cause us to think differently. I hope you have followed along. Now I have uh, a wonderful friend and somebody who's, who's been excellent uh, following with us on this, um, on this journey of wealth creation, especially now that we've moved our classes online completely. And this is Andrew. Andrew, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your second name. It is double barreled, so you shall be the one to pronounce it properly so I don't kill it. Uh, so if, if one of my teammates can be able to put Andrew up on the screen, Andrew is about to share uh, his experiences uh, in doing the Centonomy class online and also uh, some of the wealth creation and purpose-driven thinking that he went through. If you can uh, just help me out with that very quickly to get Andrew on the screen, 
That would be great. Hi, Andrew. Hi, how are you? Please pronounce your second name before I kill it. <laughs> My name is Tinka Simire Andrew. There you go, Tinka Simire. I was yes. about to say it the wrong way, but you have done it perfectly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Andrew, share with yes, the please. people your experience of the online classes and also your thinking around purpose and investment. Go ahead, sir. Um, good morning, colleagues. I am happy to be here with you. Um, I would love to go into progress. However, I would love to start with my story because it's a unique one. I'm called Tinkasimire Andrew from Uganda. I have a, an engineering consultancy firm back in the country. And I had some savings and I was running, um, I was running, uh, I was renovating our family house. So because I was doing engineering practice, I decided that I would do some graduate studies back here in Kenya. So as I was uh, carrying out my academic studies in Kenya, I managed to meet one of my colleagues who is best here. And he told me he had won a Tony Elmeru scholarship. So I probed him further to understand how he had won it. And he told me that I had gotten the confidence to engage, to involve myself in this Tony Elmelu scholarship by um, attending Centonomy classes. So I asked him what Centonomy was, and he told me it was a financial uh, provision, uh, financial provision company that was offering courses in personal financial freedom. Hearing about financial freedom ticked up for me. So I decided to go online and understand what Centonomy actually is what courses it offers and uh, what information it does offer. And when I saw what I saw, I liked it. So I decided to enroll. So on enrolling my first class, I must allow me to be lyrical here. Centonomy 101 was love at first sight for me because I loved the way the whole course was programmed. It was, it, the whole course was interlinked because from Centonomy 101, I was able to learn the ABC strategy of tracking my expenses so that I can be able to discover a saving. Then from those savings, I also learned how to spend those savings in order to create investment, in order to create wealth. Then from creating this wealth, how do I protect the wealth? And then how, if after protecting it, how do I plan for it? All these answers were found in Centonomy 101. Now the experience, I had a very good experience in Centonomy class because I'm just a recent, a fresh graduate from Centonomy 101. And I would love to share the highlights I picked from this class. Number one, which was, which was really a drop, which really dropped a coin in my, in my thinking was that the house I was renovating was not an asset. That was made very clear and it really hit home. Uh, number two is from date, from the date class that we had, I was able to appreciate what is good date and what is bad date and how it is possible to reduce my debt collection period within which I'm working in. Then the third one was through the insurance class, I was able to understand, uh, through the insurance class, I was able to understand that insurance is not an investment. It is, me, me, uh, it is majorly about hedging and mitigating risk. Then another issue that I was also able to understand was living abundantly. I had one of our colleagues talking about Diani, I had one of our, uh, our other colleagues talking about a big farm, 200 acres, and all this was about living abundantly, which is precisely thinking big, believing in our dreams and making them fulfilled. I found those answers in living abundantly. Then another issue that hit out home for me, Sentonomi was able to lay bare the issue of investment options. There's someone who has been, I've seen among the questions, someone is talking about investment. Now, from Centonomy, we are, I was able to understand the three branches of investment, where we have one of capital appreciation, 
which is capital growth, then you have income, then the third branch, which is capital preservation. For me, from these classes, I've been able to understand the different aspects of investment and also to plan my financial journey accordingly. Then the last one that hit home for me was the time value of money. Time value of money through this class, I was able to understand a close relationship between time and money, that there is a close relationship. And it has actually taken me back to the drawing board of how I can better plan my financial journey and make sure that I can be able to achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. So from this Centonomy 101 class, going forward, it has been a change, a shift in my mindset to start to think beyond uh, the, 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 the plans that I had put in place. Because back in country, Uganda, I had a, say, a consultancy firm. I was into consultancy business. But after the Centonomy 101 class, I have gotten to appreciate, to repurpose my journey to repurpose my plan, to think bigger than a consultancy firm, whereby I've started to look at it in a diversification aspect. Because the diversification aspect has been helped through the three investment, through the three different investment branches that I've been able to understand from Centonomy. Because we have the invest, we have capital preservation, we have income and we have capital growth. And all these branches are well explained and you will understand them when you attend Centonomy 101 class. So through these, the proceeds that I would get from, the proceeds that I would get from this diversification, I can be able to use them to renovate our family home. Unlike my earlier purpose, whereby I've been using what I've been saving to get on and start to renovate a family home. This has been a revelation for me, and I would like to thank Centonomy 101 for this, for this revelation. Number two is about insurance. Courtesy of before I came to Centonomy 101, I did not have kind words for insurance companies. But during the Centonomy 101 class, I will attest to you, I went ahead and signed up for health insurance immediately. And as I speak right now, I'm on a health insurance policy and I intend to remain on a, to have an insurance policy in my life going forward. Another issue that I learned about, the, the beauty about Centonomy 101 class is that they would give a follow-up, there would be a follow-up in an email whereby um, you saw that table that, that, uh, Ms., uh, that Waithaka shared with us and the spending tracker. All these things, all this information that they were able to share with us, you not only get information in verbal format, but you also get it on email. For, so during our classes, our, we were able to get um, a spending tracker and a balance sheet. So the spending tracker helps you to monitor your expenses and I've been using it to monitor the expenses. I've become more cautious about how I spend my money. And in the June, I will be carrying out a balance sheet because the balance sheet is able to help me understand my worth. Do I have assets or do I have liabilities? What are assets? What are liabilities? These answers are given in Centonomy 101. They have been a revelation for me and I am going to follow them going forward. Then another issue that I learned was about professionals. Centon the beauty about Centonomy 101 is that they had professionals that were coming in to tell us real life experiences. If you had someone who was talking about real estate, you had a real, a real estate agent, a real estate broker telling you the ins and goings around the business of real estate, which gave me an, a, an impression of the relevance of professionals in our financial journey. For those of us who are saying that we want to build houses in beachfront houses, for those of us who want to come up with uh, acres of land, have farms, uh, go for travel, these are all journeys of wealth creation. And on these journeys, we need professionals. That is one thing that I have learned from Centonomy 101, because professionals will help us 
to avoid costly mistakes that would, uh, would, that would affect us. As a note of appreciation from Centonomy 101, I would like to thank Centonomy 101 for putting up this course that was well, that was well thought out and well administered. To me, I consider Centonomy 101 to be a balanced 12 course meal that is served by the best chefs in town. So for all those who would love to join Centonomy 101, I advise you, it is very, very good. And for me, it, at my age, it is a very good revelation going forward on this journey. And then uh, I would love to say that Centonomy 101 engaged professionals. The people that walked into that class were professionals indeed, and they did a professional job. So trust me that when you join the Centonomy 101 class, you're going to be engaging with professionals, you're going to be speaking with professionals and getting a professional point of view. For those of us who respect our time, one thing that I learned from Centonomy 101 was that when it was nine, the class started at nine. So time was kept and not only was time kept, but there was value attached all the way. There was value attached all the way. So that is one thing that I learned from Centonomy. Usage of time and how we would use our time, we would attach value to our time. Even in this pandemic, because I, as a fresh graduate, I've had the experience of face-to-face, uh, face-to-face, uh, face-to-face communication of the Centonomy class, and also an online experience of the Centonomy class. When we, when the pandemic started, Centonomy had to shift. The classes had to shift from a face-to-face -face interaction to an online interaction. So I would like to be very frank with you, colleagues. When Centonomy was shifting from the on, from to online interaction, I was a doubting Thomas. I would love to be very frank. I was a doubting Thomas. But as we kept on moving through these classes, appreciating how the product was being delivered on an online platform, how the value was not lost on an online platform. I will tell you right now, colleagues, I am akin to the biblical salt and Paul. The online classes worked and they worked well. There was value and there was value through and through. And I would like to thank Centonomy for being agile and for being adaptive in these unusual circumstances. I would love to say that for those of us who are not yet, who would love to join Centonomy 101, Centonomy 101 is a shift in mindset. It is a drastic shift in mindset because I've gotten a shift in mindset. As the previous, uh, our, our distinguished counsel was saying uh, before, distinguished counsel Gladys was saying before, that it teaches you a relationship. You get a renewed relationship with money. That is something that Centonomy 101 has done for me. A shift in mindset, which I believe is very important for us to shift transformation. Many of our African governments are seeking, are advocating for young people to become more of job creators than job seekers. However, the education curriculums that are supposed to facilitate this transformation are still steeped in a job seeking culture. I believe that initiatives such as Autonomy 101 are going, will go a long way in shifting this narrative into shifting African mindsets. My prayer is that this gospel of financial freedom spreads like wildfire across the continent. And I would like to tell the citizens of Kenya and the citizens around the world that the opportunity that Centonomy 101 presents is a golden opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I would love to conclude with a parting shot that uh, and I would love to pick it from Waithaka's inconclusive remark. Waithaka, I quote, say in one of our classes, 
world creation is simple. Wealth creation is simple. If you want to go in further and understand this statement, for those of us who have not yet experienced Centronomy 101, I advise you to enroll in that class. It is mind revealing and it's an opportunity, a golden one, once in a lifetime. As otherwise, thank you very much for listening to my journey and I am glad to be sharing it with you. Andrew, you are amazing. You are amazing. Thank you so much. So eloquent. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, you're right. You, uh, you are truly waxing lyrical there for a little bit, and we really appreciate um, your words and your kind words to us also for participating in the same way. Today, we're talking about how purpose drives investment choices. Um, obviously, there are some statements that are being made along the way. <laughs> I will, I will elaborate on them. I'm seeing some questions coming out. People are saying, I, your, my house that I own is not an asset. You have to explain that. I saw that in the, in the chat and we will explain and we'll have that discussion. And remember, when it comes to adult learning, we never, it's not like the old school system where a trainer or a teacher comes in front of you and tells you, this is it. This is what life is. You, you take it or leave it. No. In the class, we have honest discussions and debates, and we present a certain perspective from which you can begin to choose how to take it. And so I will discuss that issue about, is my home an asset or not? The, the house that I own, that I live in, how is it an asset? And we can have that discussion. I've also seen uh, some people asking, what wealth creation is simple? Andrew, you put me in a very tough position to explain that during this, this session, which I will, and we'll use We'll use that amortization schedule, uh, which I showed you earlier, which we use in the class and share so that you're able to put your own debt plans ahead uh, and, and look through them. I'll show you a little bit later. And so all these questions that are coming through, we're going to respond to them very quickly. However, I want to spend a moment right now uh, and invite the next speaker who's going to come and share uh, their experiences at Centonomy because they have had the greatest number of experiences. They were there from the very beginning of this uh, program, which is uh, Centonomy 101 and all the other programs that we offer at, at Centonomy. I believe she calls herself student number one of Centonomy. Even as an investment advisor, she was still a student at that time. That is our founder, the entrepreneur, the coach, and the chair of the board at Centonomy, and my boss, Washek Ndwati. Take it away, Shekin. Baka, just confirming you can hear me. Okay, all right. Um, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you, Andrew. I've also had my notebook here all along and uh, I just felt like, it's like you took the words out of my mouth between the two of you. Yes, I'm student number one because I think the journey of Centronomy for me has been forced me to accept that I am a student for life. And I think for all of us, that's the one thing we must understand, no matter what it is, we are students for life. And even what this season of COVID is teaching us, it's giving us time to take stock and reset and understand what is that all about. In my book, Making Sense, uh, some of you already have it. I, wrote, I use a quote saying, money is a tool for the life, but it is not that life. Money is the, is the medium, but we all have a responsibility to actually define what is that life going to be about. So money as a tool needs a job description. And let me tell you how I, I started finding out about we have to give money a job description, otherwise it's not going to do the work for us. And money in itself is never enough. So you guys know if I gave you a million, how much, what if you, or you got a million today, what will you want? Isn't it another million? If you got 10 million, isn't it another 10 million or 30 million? Even if you got a billion, yeah, yeah you will still want another million. So until we get to the point where we have defined why, yeah, why a million, why 10 million? We keep going and running in this rat race where it's never enough, yeah? So, um, I like to travel. And so a lot of my money 
experiences or aha moments have been around travel. Remember today we're talking about purpose. So one of the job descriptions me have given money in my life is to travel. Um, and when I understood that 300 bob that I was spending on lunch every day was a holiday, it changed my perspective. So you could eat 300 shillings on lunch, but when you do 300 times 365, you'll come up to about 109,000 shillings. So your job description for your 300 bob could be eat lunch every day, or your job description could be go on holiday. That same could be also pay debt. It could be invest. It could be school fees, whatever you want to give the job description. But have we taken time to actually set that job description? When I turned 40, I had set years ago that I will turn 40 in Las Vegas. And I did. I went to Las Vegas with the same concept of lunch money. I went to Las Vegas. Yeah. And I remember before I went, I was telling somebody who, in my opinion, is much wealthier than I am. They earn a lot more money per month than I do. And I was telling them I'm going to Las Vegas. And they were like, how? What? You're doing so well. So, but when I go through that person's lifestyle, they spend a lot more money than me on everyday things, on going out every Friday. So I think where we've become stuck with money is that we've not figured out what am I telling money to. Do. So today, and I think what we do at Centonum is help you define what that job description is and the path to it. And some, some lessons have also come by mistakes. Uh, there's a whole period of my life where 10,000 shillings every month was going back to pay credit card because of mistakes of giving money the wrong job description earlier on, which was buy, 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 buy things and get into the debt. So we are in a different environment. And I think I heard of a quote, someone quoted, don't waste a crisis because a crisis is always there for us to learn a lesson. So sometimes we've got to say, what is the past telling me? And I think the past for all of us has been the mistake of not having a purpose with our money and the mistake of not giving that money a job description. So I want to talk about two things. One is mistaken identity and one, what, what is the place of purpose with your money? So identity is a big part of how we end up managing money because how you identify yourself is exactly what you're going to do. If you identify yourself as a 500 bob person, you're always going to keep thinking about 500 bob. If you identify yourself about as a 5 million person, you will start thinking about 5 million shillings. I once went for a talk and the, it was a talk about mindset of billionaires and they had this billionaire. And he kept saying that to make a billion, you have to think in billions. So if you want to make a million, it is forcing you right now to start thinking in millions or in tens of millions or in hundreds of millions. But a lot of us are stuck. And I think for me, how this became very real for me is when I started Centronomy. And I started Centronomy by doing one-on-one, -on -one, going to people and doing individual personal financial plans. And I remember I started Centronomy at the worst situation of my financial life. I had left employment. I had gone into another business that didn't work out. Now I'm starting a second business. So you can imagine I was feeling like I'm a failure. I was feeling like, surely, can I really go on? There was nothing in my bank account. Um, it was hard. And here I am starting financial planning. I was still in those places where I'm figuring out even to get to the client. Does this fuel, will it take me two kilometers? Will it take me three kilometers? Yeah. But I learned a very important thing. I'd go there um, and do the session for the client and the client would be happy. And I was very insecure because I was going and talking to people who some of them had tens of millions in their bank account, whilst our fuel for me was a problem. So you can imagine the insecurity. But don't we feel that way with money? Don't we feel because I only have 10,000 shillings, I can only fit in this circle? Oh, I only have 5,000 shillings, I can only think in this circle. But what that taught me and I've carried along is what you can achieve is never limited to what you have today. If we keep focusing on survival, we will only get survival. And I guess some of you have been looking at the charts until you, you could have been earning you, over that, let's forget about COVID, over time, you've probably earned more money over time. Are you wealthier? That's the question. Yeah. And why? Because we enter this rat race of surviving and survival just gets more expensive. You want to buy more things. You want to live in a bigger house. You want to drive a better car. 
yeah they are more relatives to support so if, if we if we don't get our why correct and we keep identifying ourselves by survival it doesn't matter if you earn a one million shillings uh people who win money quickly by gambling doesn't the money finish in, in a couple of months? It's because they still have a survival mentality. So what made them start gambling in the first place is exactly what will make them be even worse off than they were in the first place. So we want to survive COVID, but we don't want to come out of it simply as survivors. Do you guys want to come out of this simply as a survivor? No, I want no, to be clear. No, no. I want to be clear. Where do I want to go? Yeah, and as Gladys was saying, what can I use this time? Can I use this time to start drawing that picture? What will I do? What will I not do? Even some of us, we, we, we know we made mistakes with money. Yes, we may have found ourselves in a place where incomes have been cut, but when we had the income, we didn't even put things like emergency funds aside, correct? Yeah. So now is the time to go back and start evaluating what did I do that got me here? Yeah. Um, there are some things I will not do, even simple examples, like now that I've experienced online life, uh, there are some meetings I find myself, I've spent half the day going to and from a meeting because it's so far from either the office or where I live. So now I know some meetings no longer have to be attended physically. So my default will be, can we have the meeting online? There are some hours I'm thinking, even as we go, will not see me on the road. There's traffic, you get tired, plus you're burning so much fuel. Yeah. So I think We've got to use this to get about that survival mentality. That not knowing your identity and identifying yourself as very small leads to people pleasing. You start spending on a lifestyle sometimes that you cannot afford to please other people. We need to start questioning that car that you want. Is it really you who wants it? Or do you think by buying that car, you will get attention and respect? And what you're actually attracted to is the attention and respect from other people. If you do go and buy that car in this, in, in, with that motive, you can buy the best car today. What will happen instantly? You get the attention. You get the respect. But after three months, what happens? Someone else buys a better car. So you're left feeling that now you should keep upgrading and upgrading and upgrading. And we go through the same thing with where we live. We go through the same thing with phones. And sometimes we do the same thing in where we take our kids to school. So we've got to use this time to start evaluating what part of my life was about pleasing other people. Because the job description we're asking you to give your money is not the one of pleasing other people. And a lot of us, we got that lifestyle of pleasing other people is what has gotten us in debt. Yeah. Even not being able to tell people no, not being able to tell that relative no, I don't have, has gotten us in debt. Uh, this is, is for me. You, you hear things like, and I'm still talking about mistaken identity here. This is for me. This is not for me. Uh, that kind of investment is for me because it fits into the small budget I, I feel I am worth, but the, the others is not for me. Listen here, even though you have 5,000 shillings, I started Centonomy with, with a total budget of 3,000 bob, yeah? And this is what it has become. Even if you have 5,000 shillings, there's no limit to your mind and, where, and your, you, you will only take the steps that your mind has seen. So if you stay and say, I'm just going to, be with my 5,000 Bob people and talk about 5,000 shillings. At Centronomy, we have a phrase called the poverty support group. Please today ditch the poverty support group. And the poverty support group are, once and now there's so much poverty support going on. Ooh the poverty support is, oh, things are bad. Oh, COVID, what might happen? The economy is this. Da, 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 da. We understand it's a challenging time. Fine, face the facts. Yeah, do what you have to do. Keep yourself safe. But beyond that, is, is the best use of your mind those conversations? So today, dump your poverty support group. If you are the chair of your poverty support group, I suggest you resign and hand over to somebody who was not here today. So even though you have 5,000, don't, don't define yourself as the 5,000 Bob kind of person. And I can only go for investments of 5,000. You could have 5,000, but you can also say, hi, yeah, 5,000 every month is 60,000. Hiya, yeah, now you are thinking as a 60,000 kind of person. It's not about your 5,000 anymore. And even further, you can even say, if I can get 60,000, I know 10 other people who also can get 60,000. Now we have 600,000. Now you're thinking. 
Now you're a wealth creator. And that's what wealth creators do. They never work within the box. And what we're doing at Centronomy is taking you out of that box that sometimes has been defined for you without you knowing. So you can have the 5,000, but your mindset can be 600,000. Your mindset can be 6 million. And you can actually start chatting out how, what will you do with what you have. When I go back and read the journals, because I've been writing for a long time, I've been writing, I just kept writing even earlier on, these are the plans I have for the company. This is what I would like to have. This is this is uh, whatever. And, and years ago, I think I was in the second year of Centronomy and I was saying, wow, we'd, I'd really like us to have our training center. It took us probably another four years to get to that training center. But when I look back, I, I realize the things I wrote down as goals, they happen. Sometimes you don't realize it because you've already moved over because we move over to the next thing very, very quickly. Now we are in this online life and we are seeing something. We, I'm so glad I'm seeing people from all over the world who have tuned in today because now we are seeing the world can have access to, to what it is we're offering. So don't mistake your identity. Your identity is not your bank account. Your identity is what is in your head and your head can take you places. It is first your head first before your bank account. Now the place of purpose with your money, it, under, it helps you understand why, why, why. That is so important. Please know you are just not another cog in this wheel of life. You are created for a, with a different thumbprint, so you are meant to do different, and in some way, you are meant to live life differently. How many of us are, are tired of being swept by the current of life? You know that current of life that tells you this is the way it happens. This is the, the it for people like us. This is it for my tribe. This is because we even have those stories of my tribe don't do this, my community doesn't do this. How many of us are tired, yeah? So if we don't use this time to draw, to imagine, to dream what life could be. If we don't do it now, when? This is a time to answer what's in it for you. The fact that you have been put through this situation or put through this time in life when we have a pandemic, what's in it for you to, to do? Answer, what do you want? I really loved what was coming out today, housing, Diani and whatever, but do you realize how little time we give ourselves to actually answer what do you want? Not your parents, not even your children, not what you were taught to believe. In the first class of Centronomy, we go through that thing of what were your previous experiences and what have they taught you to believe? Even statements like money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. And you go through that section and you understand how what other people taught you is influencing your decisions today. So you, some of us are still that seven year old that is it has, was told I'm not good enough. And that is what we are carrying to the table and trying to struggle with that and create wealth. We are, we are, it's not about your education. I mean, it's not about if you have a master's, you can be richer. And if you didn't finish primary school, you can't be richer. Honestly, when it comes to the wealth creation world, it doesn't work like that. It's not how you are brought up. Uh, it's why, that is when people don't answer why, is why you see so many rich and happy people. And then they are bringing up rich and happy kids, yeah? And I remember once in my travels, again, I was traveling to see my brother with, together with my sister who lives in Australia. And we had really saved up. We had uh, gone for travel agents, looked for deals for traveling, but we were going. And it was an achievement for us to be able to go see my brother. And again, we met this really wealthy lawyer who couldn't figure out how we are going to Australia and how we have time to go to Australia. So I was like, you're stuck. You're stuck in a mentality of thinking. He's stuck with the current of life, yeah? So what's your why? It could be traveling, but it's also how you retire as Gladys was talking about. It could be where your kids go to school. It could be legacy. It could be a venture or a project or a business that you want to start. What's in need for you? And that answer has nothing to do with your resources. And if you've gone through hard things or you are facing hard things right now, remember the purpose of hard things are always to fuel something. You see, us who read the Bible and are believers know that all things work for the good, yeah? So even the hard things that you are going through are meant to do something. So the question is, how will you have used your hardship? It's the time I got myself into serious credit card debt, but I learned and I've not gotten into credit card debt 
at that level ever, ever, ever again. And I'm so conscious about credit card debt. I've gone through hard things building a business, but they have taught me how to approach and different ways of approaching things. Yeah, that's why we're not collapsing even now. So secondly, so understand your why. Then in achieving that why, understand that there is a cost. This is what purpose costs you. Purpose will cost you. So to go on holiday for me was a 300 bob lunch, yeah? But purpose will cost you the kind of company you keep. Purpose will cost you the use of time. Uh, we're saying the centronomy class will cost you two and a half hours per week in class, but you can see the results of the people who have also gone there. It will also cost us procrastination. It will also cost us fear because don't we have fear, especially now, and hasn't fear always held us back, yeah? It will cost you dealing with avoidance. I remember I used to go to the ATM. I remove money, you know, withdraw 2000 Bob. Do you want a receipt? No, yeah, because I don't want to deal with what's the balance, what do I have to do? It will cost you dealing with debt, but it's always about making the vision more important than the current situation. And that is why you don't put things on hold, yeah? Because COVID is here, challenging environments are here. This is not the last time we'll go through one, but isn't your, does, has your vision changed? Me, the vision of how I want to live life has not changed. I'm using this part to learn certain lessons, but I still want to do the things you want to do. So you've, if you still have a vision for your life, you've got to make that more important than the pain of the current situation. So don't put things that you should be doing on hold, yeah? Um, the cost sometimes is just knowing our personal habits and understanding what, what infrastructure you need to know. I knew to build savings, I needed to, whenever money comes in, it needs to first go into the savings account. So the infrastructure I put in my life was even when I'm paid, it goes into the savings account and then I pay myself to spend. So that's the only way I could build because then the mentality goes into saving first and then spend because that was a serious shift I needed to make in order to achieve my whys, the things that I want to do in life. Purpose will make you also with your money understand. Now, once you know that picture, this is what I want to do. This is what kind of life I want to live. This is when I want to retire. This is the kind of income I want um, when I retire. It, it will start changing. What do you do now? What do you do in the short term? What do you do in the medium term? What do you do in the long term? And where? And this is where the part of where investments are not, we don't invest for the sake of investing. We invest to meet, to, to meet an intention. We invest because there's an intention and a purpose for the investment. You know, we are Africans and we like land. And even whenever we're in class, so many people are like, I have a plot here, I have a plot here, I have a plot here, I have a plot here. But we are saying there's nothing wrong with that. But what is the intention? Is it so that you can go and say, I have plot, I'm also a landowner? Or what did you actually want to do with the land? And we find situations where people are saying, yes, I have all this land, but I'm five years to retirement and I have nothing generating income. Listen, you cannot go to the supermarket and ask them to let you walk out with your trolley and not pay and say, I'm a landowner or I'm a homeowner for that matter, yeah? So if your intention is in a retirement, a certain lifestyle you want to live at retirement, you've got to have built the assets to generate income. For now, you could also have a short term plan as part of that purpose you're like it's school fees I all I all I this uh, this uh, struggle that we have every year or every term with school fees could be your plan could be I know I always want to be one term ahead of school fees so you start now saying I'm going to save x amount of money 10 whatever amount of like 10,000 shillings a month every month so I'm always ahead of school fees where will you put that money for the short term you'll now say okay yes it's a savings account or other things that mimic safe places to, to actually put money in. It could be that emergency fund. But for the longer ones, you'll say, okay, I can take some risk with this because it's, it's, it's my medium term purpose. So I can put in shares, I can put in property. And if the long one is to generate income, you've also mapped out a plan about how all those savings and all those assets at the point you need income will generate income. So the first question to ask, or people always say, we, 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 why back, don't we get people writing to us and saying, I have 100,000 shillings, where should I invest? And it's so yeah. hard, yeah? 
I get those hunts every week. Once I write my articles, I get those questions every week. I have even, some people even tell me I have 10 million. They are here. I have 10 million. Where do I put the money in? And I'm like, so I get anything from 5,000 to 10 million. And I'm like, what, what is the purpose? Is it, is it something you want to leave for your kids? Is it to generate income? Is it for your emergency fund? So what we're telling you to do, have an intention for your money first and then let the investments come to feel the, to meet that intention. Remember, money is a tool. It needs to be given a job description. So create the job description first because people also find their insurance policies all over the place, like Andrew was talking about, yet what they really needed was cash. Yeah, but your money is tied up in an insurance policy. It doesn't give you cash when you need the cash. Yeah. Then lastly, with the place of purposes, I wind up is personal fulfillment. Yeah. Just knowing that you are going through the ups and downs, but in purpose gives a different fuel, gives you a different energy. You're not living dead. You know that life we're living, and maybe this is why we've also been stopped. You are living, you're on the road, you're in traffic, you're going to job. You get there at eight, you do the routine things at work, you come back and the next day is just going into the next day, into the next day, a year goes, you set these lovely intentions on New Year's Eve, but you finish the year and nothing has happened, but your energy has been sucked out of you during the year, you are just living dead. This having your why, yeah, the purpose, yeah, helps you feel that no matter what you go through, there's an end game that is going to be fulfilling to you and important to you. Things are not just happening to you. You are not just waiting to be lucky. You are not waiting for a deal, an unspecified deal that will come and solve everything out. That every day, the ups and the downs are actually a step forward. Everything is always a step forward when you have mapped out the direction. So, as Waivaka said in the beginning, yes, I'm student number one. This journey of building autonomy has been everything I am telling you about. It has been an intentional journey. You are not here by mistake. We are not doing this by mistake. It has been a purposeful journey. And I don't think this journey is for me alone. So I'm encouraging you here to start living a life of purpose and let money come in to help you. So that's why Centonomy 1-1 is not a one-day program. Yeah, it's it's a 12-week program. We feel the first three weeks are extremely fundamental and Waidaka is going to take you through that. It is because we have to understand, answer, you have to answer your why. Where you want to live is not where somebody else wants to live. The kind of holiday you want is not the kind of holiday. The kind of legacy you want your children to have is not whatever. What you want to do with your mortgage is not what somebody else wants to do with their mortgage. Yeah. What drives you is not what drives someone else. So the Centonomy 1-1 program is structured to answer your why, to answer your dream. We are interested in you and we want the transformation and change to happen in you. We don't dictate anything to you. It is you who will start realizing, okay, this is what I need to do to achieve those other things. And as I said before, it's to give your current and your future money that job description. Note, I said your future money. Yeah. So you're even going to plan. You may be earning 10,000 shillings today or 100,000 shillings today. You know what we, you're going to do? You're going to plan to earn that 1 million shillings at Centonomy. Because if you don't plan to earn it, you will not start doing the actions that ensure you start earning the kind of money. So we are giving your current money and your future money a job description. Yeah, because that's a mistake we didn't do years ago. That's why we're, we still are in this rat race. Yeah. So it's truly, truly, I really encourage you to join us. I'm looking forward to seeing some of you in the class. Make money a tool for the life you want and give it that job description. And we'd be honored to work, to walk that journey with you. Thank you very much. Wow, wow, wow. Well, okay. Yani, the number of notes that I've taken, and I'm just remembering the pictures that you were sending us from Las Vegas. Uh, that was yeah. <laughs> uh, some true life goals. That's what I'm talking about. I, but I think the one that was most moved by it was my sweetheart. My wife is the one who's the travel one. So she, she has her own dreams that we are going to go through. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Sheke, I wanted to give people a bit yes. of an experience of the level of interactivity that we have in the online class. Um, and what okay. we're doing is we're running that session right now on, on the Zoom platform. So for those who are watching on Facebook, 
On Zoom, you're able to interact via text, so you can be able to, to write in a question, and we're getting many. That, those ones that I'm reading, I'm reading from there. But we also have the ability to actually interact. And I'm wondering if we could get Doreen. Doreen had a very simple question for you. It was directly for you, uh, Washeke. I, don't, okay. I, I hope you're ready for that response. Um, let yes. me see if I can get yes. Doreen on. Hi, Doreen. Are you there? Doreen, I'm trying to switch on your mic. In case you're there, you can speak to us. If not, yes, I'll hi, just... Everyone. Ah, how are you doing, Doreen? In fact, I'm let's see if we can see you, see you as well. Um, what you can do, if you don't mind, just ask your question directly to Washeke, which was, um, you were talking about that issue of purpose, isn't it? I think, yes, so go ahead. Yeah, so my, my question is, um, first of all, um, interesting, interesting discussion so far. So my mm -hmm. question is on the how of yeah. overcoming the purpose cost, the cost of purpose, yeah. which I yeah. found very powerful, yeah. but I think it's the biggest distraction. So maybe some useful yeah. how tips um, in our current, no, okay, not necessarily COVID reality, just in the millennial reality. Okay, I think, thank you, Doreen. Thank you very much. I think in my opinion, there are three main costs to purpose, yeah? It's, it's, it's how you use your money, which is what we're talking about today. And that's what I was saying. If you want to go on holiday, there's a cost. It means something doesn't happen, yeah? So for my example, that 3, 300 bob was 9,000 shillings per per month, yeah, uh, which is lunch. So it was, this was how you overcome it. You now be very intentional. It means I am carrying packed lunch from home. That's specific so that the 300 bob is not used. Then if per month it's 9,000 shillings, it's every month intentionally at a certain point um, saying 9,000 shillings removed from current account, 9,000 shillings goes into savings account, yeah? So it's also combining purpose with specific actions and committing to those actions, yeah? Um, then there's use of time. Uh, like for a lot of people, and I'm seeing the questions, it would be, I need to learn further, yeah? So even when people come and sign up for the Centonomy class, it always amazes me. In the beginning, people are always, oh, I don't have the two and a half hours. I don't have the three hours. And then by the end of the class, people don't want to go. But they're like, why is this the last class? Because before they were like, I can't commit two and a half hours. And now we've made it easier even because we have the online option, yeah? So it's saying, what am I not doing? That I, so so it, it means, am I leaving work earlier? Um, am I organizing stuff at home so I can have three hours of undistracted time? And sometimes as simple as the cost is Netflix. The cost of me attending this class is Netflix. Yes, sometimes as simple as that, yeah? So sometimes when you find yourself resisting, even ask yourself what is resisting. And then there's what everybody is going to have to overcome. Because sometimes even we are procrastinating and doing all these things that you're talking about because of fear. Yeah, fear is not something I can, we can finish in this discussing here, but just understand we are going to go through the journey of overcoming, building that muscle that overcomes fear. And a lot of, of, of it is about putting the why in front of you all the time. But action, specific actions is how it happens. Yeah. Wow, wow. Sheke, and, that's, and that's the level of interaction that you're able to have yeah. in the online classes. And as Washeka yeah. has mentioned, one of the biggest benefits that we have at this time of being able to learn in using the digital platform is that um, unlike before where you had to come to a certain place within town or a certain place uh, in order to sit in that class, if for instance, you just want to retake the same class because we run the class four times a week, the very same class. So if you come in on Tuesday and maybe, maybe you came in a little bit late or there was something that you just want to go over, you can come in on the Wednesday, the Thursday or the Saturday from the comfort of your home. So there's been a huge shift in the way that we are, we are thinking yeah. about that. And, and Sheke, I'm sure you're reading the comments. People are very grateful yes, for your insights yes. that are coming yes, through thank there. You everybody. And there. And there are a couple I just wanted to read through because this is how we interact is through text and also through a speech as you heard with Doreen who was there. Um, someone here was just talking about it earlier. Burton was, was, had mentioned that uh, Washeke, learning that financial freedom is not about being mean to yourself. Yes. Understand what I love and learning yeah. how to afford it. Could you yes. comment on that if you don't mind? Shake? Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Whoever, who's, well, who said that statement? And because they are you know you're taught, you're you're preaching to the converted which is it. i am i'm such a believer in that so many people think that if i if i come to get my money right 
um, if I do a budget, because even with the, even we go through this in class where people always think that the word budget is about restricting me, it is not. And we are actually saying, uh, it's about what I say, uh, there's, a, there's a phrase someone used, tell your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. That is what mm -hmm. a budget does. But it's a very value-based system. That's why we're not coming to tell you this is the one financial plan all of you will walk out with, yeah? It's tailor-made, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because everybody has different values. Today, I've talked about traveling, but to somebody else, traveling is, is, not, is not important to them. It yes, could be yes. more about leaving a legacy. It could be more about other, other things, yeah? So mm -hmm. I'm being honest with traveling because it's an authentic journey that you have to walk. And my authenticity comes from travel, yeah? That's so right. it's about what do you value, yeah? There are certain things you want to do for your family that you value. If you value that Sunday lunch treat with your family, go for it, yeah? yeah, uh, yeah. But you'll probably find other things that you're spending on because you're not aware that you really don't value. Yeah, and the cost of being able to do those those things that you value is to do away with the things that 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 you you don't value. In the living, someone mentioned Andrew talked about living abundantly class, and we even ask people, yeah, take yourself 30, 40, 50 years from now. What do you want to have experienced in your life? Yeah, and 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 uh, and 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 let's and let's work with that yeah so it's it's really a value based financial planning class yeah that's right that's right yeah and so that i mean there's so much that is coming through so many questions that that are coming through and i'll try and uh, break it down for everybody very shortly how the program works and how you can benefit from it but there are some very specific issues that are coming up uh, and and i'm loving it because um, every time that you find a problem in business that's even more business coming through. Here's a comment, Sheke, that uh, yeah. we had dreamed about, if you remember yeah. last year. Ivy yeah. Shaka, she's, she's written in and she said, Sentonomy, please record some of your classes or do some kind of on-demand for us in California, Pacific mm. Standard Time. We want to join the program, but sometimes time zones are not uh, friendly. Ivy, that's exactly what we are working on yeah. right now. Uh, and yeah. Sheke, I believe that we'll be able to work some of these schedules to allow yes. for these people to yes. attend the classes. So yeah. this is why we're doing this now, the way that we're doing it. Uh, Sheke, yeah. I don't know, yeah. you can talk about your dream of, of raising Africa because I can, I can yeah. feel Africans around the world uh, yeah. who are rallying around this cause. Okay, let me, let me, I guess, explain. And I guess even this might help people understand that purpose is also a journey. When I started this company, it was about, can I help one individual? Yeah, so that was the individual financial plans. And how did I know that? I went through a, a tough business experience where I was doing stockbroking and I started having conversations with people about money and that's where the aha moment started coming. Um, so it started, ah, let me work with one person. As I worked with one person, I noticed similarities, uh, budgets, what people don't know where to invest, etc. And I also said, hi, if the same hour, can work for one person. Can that same hour work for 10 people? Because more people want this, more people want this kind of help. Then as I walked this dad journey, you realize people also want help that I cannot do alone. And I think that's why wealth creation is you're never meant to do it alone. So it was getting other people, getting experts, the experts Andrew was talking about who can come and teach. We are not the me and whether are not the ones who are gonna teach you property. Yeah, we're not gonna lie and pretend to be the property experts. It's, it's that. So that centronomy is 11 years old. And from the first personal finance classes, it, it, it hit us that the, the purpose is wealth creation. We don't want you to, this is not a budgeting class. Let me be clear. This is not a class to just learn how to save or to just learn how to exist, yeah? This is a class to create wealth, yeah? And as we did that, we understood that there are younger people who are in college who also want to start their journey of wealth creation. And that's came in campus edition. We then understood their business people who want to turn their businesses into wealth creation assets, businesses that can mm -hmm. create wealth, hence autonomy entrepreneur. We are a firm believer in careers are a great place to create wealth and then entered a career hub. So we've done this, we've had thousands of people attend the class. Uh, we've had, had millions uh, be on our online platform. 
we've gone into partnerships with some corporates. We also do this. If you're if you're here on behalf of people in your organization, please note we also do this training in organization. So I can say directly, probably autonomy has impacted over two hundred thousand people through our training in some way, and millions on 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 the platform. Mm. As we continue, we are looking at what is our place in in what is our what is our place in in the world we are living. And I think for me, COVID has really brought home that it's time for Africa to become producers, yeah? Um, when the doors to China, the airports are not coming in and we can't get things outside. Do you see how quickly people went into, let's produce face masks, let's produce testing kits. Why can't we have that level of production in whatever we do? Even in our jobs, can we produce more? Can our money um, can our money work more for us? So we are now saying, let, let Africa become wealthy. Let us stop this mentality, or oh, it's, it's the world to come and save us because we do have enough, both intellectual resources and physical resources in this continent to let Africa be the lender, not the, to let Africa be the lender, not the borrower, yeah? So we just have to change yes. our identity as Africans and begin to use what we have very effectively and have longer term goals. And that is why our dream has gone now beyond Kenya and is now about Africa and, and empowering Africans to become wealth creators and us collectively to become pro a producing continent. I'm telling you, Sheke, and it's not just Africa. Um, yeah. I, I, we saw a comment coming on one of the videos that you had done earlier, and I encourage people yes. to, to actually subscribe and, and to like our Facebook page, subscribe on YouTube, because there's lots of this free material that's going out that will help yeah. you along the way. We had a, a person from Singapore who wrote in and said, that idea of tracking her, her expenses allowed her to wow. pay off her loan on her house much wow. faster. I think she reduced that if she reduced the amount of time she was going to pay by about five years on that mortgage. So wow. those principles actually cut across the board. This is somebody yes. from Singapore, a lady called Hannah. Amazing. Uh, wrote in and said that to you. So this principle is not just about Africans, it's everybody. We need to raise up and become more purposeful with our lives. Sheki, I want to respond to some of the questions that are coming okay. through here. Just stay on and, and you All can right. help with the thinking through. Uh, there was some questions about, and I'll read this. This was coming off. Um, this is uh, Facebook, I believe. Just hold on a second, second. Let me just get okay. that correct. Yeah, I want to read the question right. And it was, is mortgage an asset or liability? This is Shiro. And I wanted actually to show, you know, practically mm. seeing what mm. a mortgage looks like begins to help you to think differently. Mm. So mm. I want you to imagine, Shiro, maybe you take, a, I'll say a mortgage here in Kenya, uh, maybe for a house that's worth 10 million. So let's look at it. I hope you can see it on the screen, Sheke. So yes, I, I can. That. Yeah, so that's uh, 10 million shillings. And in Kenya, the mortgage rate will be about 14%. And that 10 million will describe a certain type of house somewhere. And then you'll take that mortgage for about 20 years. So Shiro, in the, in the class, it's so important, you know that adage that says, um, give a man a fish and they eat for a day, teach a man to mm. fish and for a lifetime. That's the principle we're learning. We don't want to tell you, is a mortgage a liability? Uh, is it a positive or negative? You need to understand what a mortgage is, have the tools like what we have on the screen, and then you make a decision. So when you see it, you begin to see the, the effect of what a mortgage looks like. So let's look at one here. Imagine you take a mortgage for 10 million shillings at 14% for 20 years. So here are some things that you begin to see. If you look up here on the right-hand side, you begin to see, and for those who are outside of Kenya, you'll see about 124,000 shillings a month repayment. For that type of house, Washeke, yeah. is that the rent that you would be paying to live in that house? No. You see, for that type of house, you're probably renting at what? 70, 60? Or less. To, or less. Yeah, or below. 70 and below. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the, it's, so the cost is so much higher. And yeah. now when you see it, then you can be able to say, okay, wow, Maybe that's a high cost per month, but here's another number that people don't usually see with a mortgage, and that's the interest. Interest. Cost. So if you look at the cost down there, Shiro, you'll see the interest on this loan is 19.8 million shillings. So I want to see if people are still alert. If you can type in the chat box there on Zoom, or you can type in the in the in the Facebook comments, how much has Shiro, if she took this mortgage, how much will she pay for this house in total? 
And Rosemary is the Amy. fastest that I've seen. She has says it close to 30 million shillings for the house over that 20 year period. Mm. Of time. Now you can be able, to, now that you see it, you can make a choice and say, does this work for me or does yeah. it not work? For me? And here's the thing, this tool works across the board because my brother-in-law is, is a policeman in the US, in, in Virginia. And we shared this same discussion with him. And for him, the discussion is completely different. Because yeah. in the US, well, check if you remember this, there they yeah. get a mortgage rate of 3%. Yeah. And now when yeah. you adjust it to 3%, as you can see, for him, it makes more sense to take this mortgage. In fact, he pays less in rent than he pays as for his, the mortgage for the house that he's living in. So you yeah. see the principle, the principle helps you to begin to see, does it work for me or not? Yeah. And that's what we do in the class at St. Onomi. So the question is, is a, is a mortgage good or bad? That's not the question. Is, does it work for me? And those yeah. are the things that we're talking about. So it really depends, not just Gilbert is responding online. I think it depends on the interest rate, not just yeah. on the interest rate, but also on the investment that you're making and the kind mm. of returns that you're looking for. So Waidaka, just to add to that, um, so your consideration for that mortgage is first of all the cash flow. Can I afford that 124,000 shillings per month? Yeah. yeah. If, if, you're, if you're doing normal interest rates, yeah, not the, and I know there are some bankers here who their consideration is different because they get preferred rates of 6% or 5% from where they work. Yeah. Right. But That's these for right. the normal people who are not working in a bank. So can I afford the cash of 124? Um, understand that you will pay 30 million for the house. Are you okay to pay 30 million shillings for a house? Will mm. the house be at that point worth more than 30 million to, for you to have recovered? So if you did the 10 million and at the end of it, you sold mm -hmm. the house for 15 million. Some people think they have made a profit, but actually they've not, yeah? yeah because you yeah. actually bought the house for 30 million shillings. And if you do decide to go ahead with it, the, it's, it's what Waidaka showed you earlier with the other, with the other loan. It's, mm -hmm. can I cut this mortgage? Can I cut fraud from my expenses? Take this mm -hmm. mortgage. So maybe it doesn't cost me 30 million. It costs me over time 18 million. Mm -hmm. And then that's, mm -hmm. and that's my, con and that's my consideration. So all this depends on people's individual circumstances here, but it's good that's when right. you know the facts then you can understand, <laughs> does it work for you? And what's the alternative? If, if I'm paying okay. this mortgage of 124,000, if I took that same 124,000 and invested in other things, by the end of that same period, what would that have equated mm, to? Yeah, mm, yeah, mm. yeah. And here's one of those a response. This is Anne who was just saying, you must answer my question. Yes. And I want to answer it using uh, one of the tools that we use in the class, just to begin to think through this. Um, she was, you know, I think it was Andrew who mentioned, I think you can see the asset flosset screen right now. Is that what you see, Sheke? Yes, I can see. Ah, wonderful. So Andrew had mentioned, and he said it, and you know the problem when you say things in passing, people miss it. Andrew had said, my, is my house, my house that I'm renovating is not an asset. Now, <laughs> it's important mm. to put everything in context, everything in context. So I have to respond to Anne because she has asked the question twice. Let's try and break it down this way. Let's say the house that you can see on the right hand side, that residential house, that wonderful palatial house on the right hand side is your home that you live in. In Kenya, maybe it's worth a hundred million uh, uh, shillings. That's about a million dollars or so for those for context around the world. So it's a hundred million shillings and you live in it. Let's see if we can get some responses on this, on this question, um, both on Facebook and also on Zoom that we're using now. If I live in that house, which is worth a million dollars, a hundred million shillings, how does that house put money in my pocket? Let's see if people are awake. Can we see how that, uh, that house will put money in my pocket? I'm living in it. It's worth a hundred million shillings. I've put it there. It's a million dollars worth. How does that house put money in my pocket? Uh, Stella is responding very quickly. I'm seeing that Gilbert, zero, zero. It does not, it does not, no money. Okay. So does the house have value? Yes, it is worth a hundred million and it will yeah. actually continue to appreciate in value over time, depending on demand in the market. But it doesn't put money in your pocket. Now we're dealing with a serious issue in, in this country and I know it's happening around the world as mm. more and more people retire into their own home and that is their biggest asset, a hundred yeah. million shillings and you're living in it. And now you're wondering, how do I survive? Because there are no other cash flows 
coming to help you to live in that house. So the house has value, a million dollars, but how do you access that value in terms of cash? So in the class, that's what Andrew was trying to say. What if we began to think differently and said, if we invested that 100 million over time into say that apartment block, which is written, which is drawn on the left-hand side. Let's say there are 100 million, so there are 10 apartments worth 10 million each. And each one of them, as you heard Sheke was saying, is giving you some yeah. rent of maybe 50,000 shillings. That's half a million shillings cash flow into your pocket that could even afford to pay the rent for you to live in that, that house on that other side, or to even start building your own home. And when you're in the home, you still have cash flows that are helping you to actually live there. And that's the principle that Andrew was talking about. Sheke, have I, have I explained it yeah, well? You've been yeah, yeah. explaining it much, much for much longer than I have. Yeah, it's, it's just to understand that yeah. one day, and I think with assets, you always go back to what is the intention. Today, we've been talking about purpose. And unfortunately, a lot of people have made the mistake with homes thinking the intention with my home is financial security. Yeah, because I won't pay rent. But as we've just proved, you can you can invest in that other one, have 500,000 shillings come in per month and live wherever you want because it's mm. giving you the cash flow to live wherever and however you want. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it could be the one that even funds you, your Diani. Maybe you're investing here. What we really wanted to go up is, is Diani. So yeah. it's understanding what is the intention. So a lot of people have made the mistake of saying my financial security, I bought a home, me, I'm, I'm okay. That is what That's we are right. challenging. That's You're not right. okay because you have a home. You will still need other things to go to the supermarket. There is no special line for homeowners who pass through and don't pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you will need something else bringing in money so that you can go to the supermarket and buy your groceries. That's yeah. Right. So you yeah. put your home into, into the, it's, it is a, an asset theoretically. It's not an investment asset because the use of the home is personal. It's like a personal belonging. Yeah. Mm, when yes. the intention of the home changes, it becomes mm -hmm. an asset. If later you decide to sell it and there's a for sale sign on your gate, mm -hmm. it becomes an yeah. asset. But most, a lot of people don't buy homes with the intention of selling. And no. because of not oh. knowing, having access to these conversations and many conversations like this we have in class, they are then forced to sell or rent it, yeah? Mm. So what mm. we're trying to do is when you do make this decision, also plan the other aspects of your life so that you're not forced. We are not saying a home is a bad thing. And for a lot of us, that is one of the things we want to plan our money to be able to do, but just understand right. it is not the only thing you must have in your portfolio for financial yeah. security, yeah. Yeah, and so we're saying that financial freedom because we remember we have to talk about, um, uh, the, the, the dream of the Diani house, you don't want to, when now you're going to retire and live in the Diani house, you're being forced to sell it so that you can survive. It's about living abundantly in that home. We're not yeah. saying the home is a bad thing. We're saying make sure that you have other assets, putting money in your pocket so that you live that Diani lifestyle mm. the way that you wanted to. So Sheke, let me just take people, people through okay. what Centronomy right. 101 does. Centronomy 101 will empower you to create uh, the wealth to sustain the, 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 your desired lifestyle. That's what it is, that sustainable lifestyle. Let me just take you very quickly through what it is. At first, we talk about our relationship with money. I hope you can see that on the screen. We talk about our experiences. And it's, this is really just module one of the 12. In the module one, we try and cover this so that it becomes the background to the actual financial discussions. What were your experiences and how they affected the way that you're doing? We begin to track our spending habits and we found that to be extremely powerful. It sounds simple, but it changes your life because it was Sheke's discovery that lunch is equals to a holiday. It was Waidaka's discovery that my uh, takeout food, takeout food in our home was, we were spending more on takeout food than our rent because we, we couldn't see the full amount. We were seeing those small, when you eat lunch at the office, 250, lunch on the weekend, we didn't see the full picture. So tracking expenses and habits begins to put you in the right mindset. And we do that early on in the program. Then it's to understand what is your net worth? Because when you understand your net worth, that begins to see, do I have assets or am I just full of liabilities? And are they assets, income earning assets? And we help you with that early on. And then we challenge you and say, where is your non-financial balance sheet? 
are there some skills, some abilities, some talents, some gifts that you have that are not financial, but you can begin to turn them into a financial asset? And what are you doing with them? For instance, what I'm doing right now, I used to do it as a part-time job as a trainer here at Centonomy while I was doing work elsewhere because I think I have the ability to communicate and Centonomy did too, so that's why they hired me. So I was using a non-financial asset, an ability to communicate to make it financial and we challenge you and help you to think through that as well. The next part, and you've been hearing uh, many of the uh, speakers earlier speak about this is how money works. So we use um, a financial training tool called time value of money, a principle of wealth creation called time value of money, which helps us see into the future in essentially understand how does inflation work and how can I prepare myself for that inflation effect? And how can I use inflation even to my benefit even right now? This uh, time value of money helps us to, to figure out how do I plan for my retirement? That dream house, and when we say retirement at Centronomy, it's not any age, it's not age 60 or whatever it is in your country. Retirement means the moment that you stop having to work in order to eat. And so we say, how do we begin to plan so that our assets take care of us in retirement? And we even help you with things like education planning for someone like me who has small children. I want to know in the next 10, 15 years when they're going to college, how can I afford to pay for that college? And what do I need to do in order to be able to get there? So remember this luck is not a strategy because in Kenya, just to give you an idea of how inflation works here, that lifestyle of 100,000 shillings in the next 10 years due to inflation will be worth 400,000 shillings. So the same lifestyle. So the lifestyle of 100,000 today will be worth 100, 400,000 then. If you're buying a loaf of bread today for 50 shillings in 10 years, you'll probably be buying it for um, a lot more than that. And you need to be able to plan for that 10 year period of time. It will cost more just as it, it cost more now than it did a couple of years ago. And we help you in the class to actually do those calculations so that you prepare in advance for such times. We also talk about managing debt. And we, use, we talk about how debt works specifically so that you can see even that, that amortization schedule which I showed you earlier, we share with you in the class so that you can begin to work out your own planning for debt. How does a flat rate loan work or reducing balance? How do credit cards work? How do mortgages work? And we use practical examples like the one I showed you earlier on there. We give you that amortization schedule. And in Kenya and other places, there are credit reference bureaus that help you to give you your credit score. And what does that affect over your lifetime? We also at Centonomy give you what is called the Centonomy Debt Repayment Plan. How do you prioritize your debts in order to repay them back as quickly as possible with the least interest possible. Because sometimes when, you're, when you've got multiple debts, I have, a, I have a credit card debt, I have a mobile loan, I have a car loan, I have a mortgage. Which one do I start with? This debt repayment plan gives you a strategy to completely reduce your debt over time. And next, sorry, let me just move on from there. We now get into the investment classes, which are vital for you to understand how, where should I invest my cash and how does cash, how do cash investments work? Savings accounts, how do they work? Fixed deposit accounts, money market funds. Then we move on to the area of fixed income securities and these are used by governments across the board. Um, these are uh, things like government bonds and treasury bills and we discuss how they work and how they can work for you. Um, so this is a great time to start thinking about investing in Africa, especially for those who are in the diaspora. Then we talk about equities and shares. How, what is a strategy for investing in the stock market? How can you tell whether it is a good company or not? And how can you do away with this idea of speculation, trying to buy low and buy and, and sell high? What is the process by which you get to invest in that same space? And then last but not least, and when anytime we're talking to Africans and Kenyans especially, we must talk about real estate land and buildings that you're going to be using to buy and sell or to rent, what is the strategy that will assist you along the way to do that? We talk about that in the class. And as we said earlier on, these classes are taught by industry experts. So when you're talking about government bonds, the trainer is, is a, a trader who's been involved in it for over 15 years. Equities and shares, 
is a is a stock broker who's been involved for a long period of time real estate uh, our real estate trainer she's been a, a land economist she's also a real estate agent with years and years of experience in fact we were reading an article of hers in the newspaper recently helping some of the listed companies to reduce their rent during this time of covid so these are all industry experts giving their real experience which the lessons on money management help you to apply otherwise it could be difficult to go and then last but not least we have the protecting your money section where we talk about tax and how does tax affect you what's the best way to deal with it how do you make sure that you're paying the right amount of tax no more no less the right amount of tax for where you are how do you make sure that you work in kenya we have a term called chamas um, which are essentially group investments where you have investment groups that are working together how do they work and how can they benefit you at this time we also talk about insurance is it an investment or what is it and how does it play a role in my financial planning and one of the most core uh, modules that you go through is called estate planning and it's not just about what happens with your money once you're gone no estate planning is about organizing your wealth today to live in this world and it's such a powerful powerful program and so these are the 12 modules that you'll go through at centonomy in centonomy 101 and they are life transforming as you heard from andrew the each links into the next and the process is to build your financial awareness to help you achieve your goals of wealth creation so personal financial management into time value of money into debt into living abundantly living abundantly is about opening your mindset to dream then we go into the investment classes on on uh, fixed income securities property and stocks then we go to the protection classes insurance estate planning and taxes and then we have the my financial plan class in which you live with a five year financial plan in inputting all the various elements that you have been learning along the way and then we talk about investment groups and graduation so that's the breakdown of what it looks like and i want to see, tell you now a little bit of how you can get involved so during this period uh, of the lockdown and and covid-19 around the world we've actually given and we said i know this is a tough time for everybody and so we're trying to make it as affordable as possible across the board with a 20% discount during this time and you can do so in installments those who are in kenya uh the pay bill number is there using mpesa so you can begin to do that as well the pay bill number is 986850 the account number is your name and 101 and the benefits that you get are these you get a certificate of completion of the centonomy 101 program and then you develop your own five year financial plan using our templates the templates that uh, washeke mentioned and i mentioned earlier we have a budget template which we've been talking a lot about this goes such on our timeline on facebook as well where we have the abc budget and we go into detail on how to use it we have the financial balance sheet which you receive as well and you can input you have the non financial balance sheet you have the emergency fund so we don't just tell you build an emergency fund we actually give you a plan on how to build that emergency fund as a template that everyone gets to use you also deal with irregular expenses and so we give you a plan those expenses like school fees that come here insurance premiums that come here all those expenses that are un, that you know are coming up but they're not every month so when they come they make that month extremely difficult we help you to deal with that as well with a plan we also have the debt repayment plan that's the one i was talking about earlier that helps you prioritize your debt so these are all templates that you receive to begin to use in the class next we also talk about the the investment planning tools using time value of money you also receive deep dives into those classes that i mentioned on protection investment classes and then we give you implementation support with that five year financial plan template as well as an accountability strategy which is built into the program now how does this work for you uh first of all it is to register in the class and usually uh, the registration is 1500 shillings but for all of you who have tuned in today thank you for showing up for our open day on this the 2nd of may 2020 there's a special registration fee of only 500 shillings you're saving a thousand bob uh that's how much in dollars about 10 dollars you're saving today uh so register with that 500 shillings uh, and you register today and you get that special offer and then you can pay the rest in installments the tuition fee in three easy installments 
When you come into the class on week one, you pay that 12,000, in week four, another 12,000, and in week eight, 10,500 to complete the entire program. So this is the, we're really trying to make it as affordable as possible so that you can get the full transformational experience. And I hope everyone in Kenya, around East Africa, around Africa and the world will get into this. You simply register today on the 2nd of May, 2020, uh, with the open day special of 500 shillings. However, here's something that we have never had before, and it is especially for this lockdown COVID-19 period, and we've never had it before, but I want to invite you. We honestly believe that everyone should be receiving and learning the financial skills to get through this period of time. And so the Centonomy financial skill sets is covered by the first three modules in Centonomy 101. And we're trying to get you to come and experience what it's like. So in those, we get that same value that I was talking about at the very beginning there, the financial templates, all of them that, you're, that you've got in there, except the five-year financial plan and the investment tools using the time value of money principles. Here you're learning money management for growth, how to get out of bad debt, and use debt to grow, and the power of compounding for growth. So you get that through the first three modules in Centonomy 101, and you can do the same by registering today, only 500 bob, 2nd of May, uh, today for the open day special, but other, other times than this, it will be 1,500 shillings. And here's the thing, after that, you can pay now by module for the first three modules, each one of them at only 3,000 shillings. As you come into the class, you pay the 3,000 shillings. It's about $30 per session. And it will begin to shift your mindset so that later on when the funds come in, because I know some people are really struggling with funds at this time, later on when the funds come in, you can complete the other classes that are here, the other modules that you go through at only 4,000 shillings per module. But we want you to get the Centonomy financial skill set that will help you to grow by money, managing your money, to help you to get out of bad debt and to use debt for growth. Like the example I showed you with the amortization schedule, that all of it, and then to help you to begin to see the, the power of compounding for growth. And that's also available today. The pay bill number is there, 986850. The account number is your name and 101. I think we've gone over time a little bit just now when it comes to uh, the session for today, it's about 10 minutes over, but we still have some time for some questions. I want to show you the value that you're getting in the Centonomy 101 program as a whole, because we really believe this is where the transformation happens. In the Centonomy 101 program, the way it is designed to take you from module to module, the 12 modules, and that's where we want you to be able to see. Oh, I see a question there about how the classes work. So just one more time, pay bill number 986850. Account number is your name and 101 at the end, and you register today, 2nd of May 2020, for only 500 bob. The classes start on the 2nd of June 2020, and this is how it works. You only need to take one class per week for 12 weeks, and there's a reason why. There's a lot of information and a lot of work to do during this, this period. So once you've gone through the class, you need some time for implementation for feedback with the trainers, which you are able to get, and then to work through that. The classes run Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, East African time at 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. East African time. And for more inquiries, you can be able to reach out to Maureen. That's how it works. Um, and she'll be able to send you a lot of detail. If you are on Facebook, there's a link that you can click on on Facebook that will take you directly to the registration on our website. And if you're not there, uh, you're following us directly on, um, this is on, on Zoom. I want to take you through the registration process. It's really simple. Uh, all it takes Wadaka, is- can I add something before- Yes, please go from there. I, I just want to, the I just want to uh, mention that if you do decide, for example, because someone was asking about timetable with kids and everything, if you do decide, yeah. let's say you're taking the Tuesday 6 to 8.30 p.m. class, and mm -hmm. for a particular Tuesday that day, you can't take it, uh, the gadgets have been taken by others, whatever, you can still do the same class on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Saturday. So it's the same class, similar, co same content, for all those four sessions per week, yeah. That's right, and, yeah. and even if 
even if Sheke, the, you just simply want to come in and just do it one more time yes, to get your yes. mindset around it. This is the brilliant. Um, this is the brilliance of this online platform because you can come into the class just to take it once again. So yes, as you're right, it's the same class running throughout the whole week, and it is about you selecting one. But you are welcome to attend any of the others, as Washeke has said. Okay. So very quickly, if you go to the Centonomy website, at the top of the website, once you get there, centonomy.com, there's a button here at the top that says Register Online. Register Online. You click on it, and it will open up in a short while, and then you put in your details there, and it's as simple as that. Make the payment. So here, put in your name, uh, your phone number, click on the desired course. We have many courses, but here today we're talking about Centonomy 101. And then you put in your email address and make sure you tell us you're not a robot, submit, and it is as easy as that, make the payment as well. So we have a bit of time now. Um, I want to put that back so that you can see uh, our faces. And I see some questions along the way. I want to get some help if you don't mind. Maureen, I know you're in the room. Maureen was uh, the head of personal finance at St. Tommy. She's the head of personal finance. Maureen, if you're in the room, um, if there's some questions that we can be able to take now, it would be great if we could do that for you, um, just so that we can get to that same space. So Maureen, if there are any questions, I'm trying to take them right now so that we can work through that. I'm looking through the chat and also on, um, Yes, Jerry, you're saying I can finally do it from Mombasa. You can do it from anywhere, even California. We're going to make sure that we get some good timings and help you, those who are in a different time zone, to be able to appreciate and go through that. We're working on that. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just looking through the comments here. Um, yes, Anastasia is asking, if classes are starting in June, can you allow registration and payment before then? 100% yes. In fact, that's why we're encouraging you. Today, there's a special discount on registration, only 500 shillings. After today, the registration will be 1,500 and you can continue to pay even as you go towards that position there. So you're more, more than welcome to do so. So yes, yes, Anastasia, you can be able to do that. How long are the online classes and the time? I've, I think I've already mentioned it. So it's one class per week for 12 weeks. And people ask, why is it? I'm telling you the information is so detailed, so important, and it takes time to absorb and to implement because there's, there's work that you're given to do by yourself to prepare that builds over time. So it's once per week for 12 weeks, starting on the first week of June. That's Akini who was asking that. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions as, as I'm, I'm going there. Um, no problem. Let's see some of the questions that came up online. Do you offer tax classes? Yes, tax is one of the modules and it's, it's taught by a tax lawyer. Um, and also that you go through how your payslip looks, what are the benefits of different tax plans along the way? Yes, tax is one of the modules. In fact, I think I'll put that modules session up there again. Um, right. This is, this is exactly what's going through there. I'm just trying to pick up on any of the other questions or comments that are coming up. I highly recommend that you begin to make those um, payments today and it will, be, it will be truly life transforming. Any other questions on the Zoom platform you can ask right now? So if you register today, your class will begin on second. Yes, that's Gabriel. The class will begin on the second of June. So you have time to prepare and put together your schedule because there'll be a, a real time commitment there. Uh, Waitaka, okay. maybe we can respond to Justin about the, yeah, no, you, you can respond to him. I think he wants clarification no. on the 3K class. I think that was a autonomy financial skill set uh, section. Wonderful, no problem. So in this, we're saying we want as many people as possible to benefit from the financial skill set to get us through this COVID time, but also to just begin to manage our money better and understand how growth, the growth mindset. If you see at the bottom there, it says money management for growth, get out of bad debt and use debt for growth and power of the compounding for growth. So these areas are covered in the module one to three of the Centonomy 101 program. And we're inviting you to take it and you can pay it uh, per module at 3000 shillings at the beginning of that class. You still register beforehand, but then as you come into the class, you'll be paying uh, weekly that 3,000 shillings. 
practice, and this is to open up to as many people as possible to get this information. It's also, in case you, you've just been wondering, is this worth your time? It's a good way to test and see, actually, to come into the class. So I hope, I hope I've responded, Washeke, to the yes, question. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's desired for, okay, Justin? Um, but we really honestly believe the full transformation experience of Centronomy is in the 12 weeks program, but we want to make sure that as many people get the financial skills to get them through this time and to get them on their journey towards wealth creation, which is why we've included this as well. Okay. Ah, Tabinus Simwa has already registered and excited. Well done. Yes, don't miss your opportunity today. Thank you so much for that comment here on Zoom. That's, uh, and that's a beautiful name as well. Already registered and going for it. Yes, don't wait, do it now uh, so that you benefit from that uh, 1000 shillings discount uh, today on the registration in dollars. I'm just being quick, about 15, uh, sorry, it's about $10 off your registration, yeah? So it's only $5 to register. Whereas after this, it will be $15 to register also. Ah, Gabriel, you're registering by late afternoon. These are the people who are purposeful, who are making that shift in their lives. So any other question or comment, Sheki, you might have noticed there that I missed out on? Um, no, no, I think we're good. I think we've covered everything. Yes, Lila has just asked for the 3K per module for module one to three. That means total 9K. Yes, 9,000 plus your registration. If you register today, Lila, for 500. 500 shillings today. If you register later, it'll be 1,500. We're trying to make sure that skill set is there to start your journey towards wealth creation. Okay. Uh, and and Wadaka, I'll just mention that if and if you do sign up for the three classes, after mm -hmm. that, should you want to continue with the rest of Centonomy 101, that is of course open to you as well. You yeah. are more than welcome. You can continue and do so. Okay. Yes. Okay, kindly show us that course content again. It's what's on the screen right now, and that's all. Oh, oh, the full modules. Let me put the modules up because people wanted to see the modules. Uh, I can do that. Why, that can, you can also take Gabriel through the pricing. He's asking if it's cheaper to pay sure. for the course per week or, yeah. So what we have done, what we have done, is that we have we have tried to make those core um, classes. On, on money management, Gabriel, and I'll put it back there in just a couple of minutes, those co courses where you learn how to manage money, debt, and, and how to think about the compounding process, we've tried to make it as affordable as possible, as affordable as possible, which is, so it is the same whether you're doing it uh, that way or through the, the, normal, the normal classes. However, there's an administrative course if you keep coming in for different modules later on, and that's why it will be a slightly more expensive to do it by module. And so it is definitely cheaper to do it if you do it and pay the full installment of 12,000 shillings uh, every month for that period of time. We want to give you some benefit for committing to the program for the full period of time. I hope that helps Gabriel along the way. Um, very good. Anastasia says, <laughs> the day ends at midnight. Yes, I, you registered by today. Yes, good Anastasia. So in total, how much will it cost for all the courses? So for the Centronomy 101 program, it's 36,000 shillings in total, but we want you to just think about it because you are able to pay in installments, it's 12, about 12,000 shillings per month. So the total, as you can see, is 36,000 shillings. If you pay today, you actually pay 35, you get a 1,000 shillings discount on it if you register today. So the registration is what we're looking for for you today. Uh, Great, Gabriel, good. So the total, that's what it is. Yes, good. Uh, this was really insightful. That's S, thank you. Welcome S. How much is it is the modular? So after that, if you do, if you pick the modules after you've done the first three, so the first three are 3000 shillings as I showed. The first three are 3000 shillings per module. But after that, from module four to the end, you'd be paying at 4000 shillings per module, okay? So as I said, the first three are the core. Those are the ones we want everybody around the world to learn because they are the principles of wealth creation in there. And then we get into the deep dives afterwards. So I'm responding, this is to Irene. Irene, Irene for the first three, it's 3000 per module. And then after that, 4,000 shillings. Oh, good, you've seen it, great, excellent. 
Uh, so all the classes from 1st June will be online. Um, look, uh, Gabriel, if, we, if by God's grace, we get out of this COVID-19 crisis, we would love to be in a classroom as well with people, um, but we're waiting for directives from the government, uh, but the online classes will continue to be available no matter what. And so um, this is a new paradigm for us here at Centonomy. I hope that's come across. All right, I'm just checking if there are any other comments. My team can help me any comments on Facebook that I may have missed. Um, thank you, Brian. You guys are really helping not only change, but improve lives. And Tony 101 is truly a paradigm shift. Thank God for that. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, uh, there was a hard, yeah, there's some yeah. issues with the, with the, the, the um, Gabriel is asking a question about the manual because we have a hard copy manual Oops, I don't have one. Sheke, do you have one in front of you uh, there? I have it in the other room. I'd have to get out of this place. Let me, let me look for it as you do that. You look, yeah. you look for it. So there's a hard copy manual that we have, and Gabriel is asking whether you'll be able to get it. It is possible to get it. However, we'll also be uh, using uh, digital copies as well, just to make it easier so that there's not too much travel around this time. Uh, so especially for those who are outside of the country, it will be uh, mostly digital, but you can be able to get a hard copy locally in Kenya. And if you're really determined, we can also send one to you, I'm sure, abroad at an extra cost. Uh, Anastasia, thank you. You've enjoyed the online discussion. It allows us uh, to be present. Yes, yes, yes. So um, yeah, this is the, the, the manual that you do get. So you will get the material. And what happens is that you, you, you get a manual like this that has notes and for all the 12 sessions that you attend in class. So over and above what the trainer will come and teach you in class, um, you'll have reference materials, notes, uh, some of the homework that you need to go and do will actually be in the, in the manual. So you do go away with a workbook that in essence becomes your financial plan. So this is how it looks like. And yeah, and then um, yeah, everything is, is in here. And so some of it will, will be distributed online now some of it will be in soft copy as well, especially now. But yes, okay. Gabriel, I think it was Gabriel you're asking, you will get all the material that you probably saw in your sister's book, book right. and, and anything that we have upgraded along the way. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, and just to mention as well, uh, Gabriel is asking where are our offices? We are uh, in Victoria Plaza in Westlands on Parklands Road. In case you want to find us, you can even just Google Centonomy. And when you Google on uh, maps it will show you where we are i don't see any other questions here and so um for those who've been uh, with us i'm just so grateful may god bless you for the time that you have come and uh, we hope to see you in class that's that's what we're really looking forward to uh this has been excellent and for all those who, if you register today you get a lot more information via email um, and you can always reach out to us as well uh, for more details, let me just put that contact up on the screen one more time uh, so that you're able to, in case there are any more questions, you're more than welcome to find out and follow up through with us. But other is from us, all we can say is God bless you. Um, we continue to pray for this nation and for the world that this crisis of COVID-19 will end. And may God help us all to continue to create wealth and live abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody.